to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Genesis, Exodus 3 and 12 says, And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You shall serve God upon this mountain. My thought tonight is simply worship on your mountain. Worship on your mountain. On your way down to your seat, tell two people, I'm going to worship on my mountain. There are about eight mountains that are mentioned in the scriptures. Horeb, Sinai, Mount of Olives, build there myself, Mount of Transfiguration, Calvary's Mountain, Mount Moriah, Zion, and the Heavenly Mountain of God. Seems like there is still room for some other mountain. My mountain. Your mountain. Amen. Moses in Exodus 3 was told by God that he would worship on this mountain. Amen. No matter what happened, God won't let him be able to worship on his mountain. Thank you, Jesus. And in your text, we're told that Lot and his children were told to leave the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and escape to the mountain. Now when I look, review the background to this text, the angels was asking a hard thing for Lot. You gotta understand that Lot had a lot of wealth in that city. He had made a choice when he and Uncle Abraham had a talk. And Lot chose the plains and the city to dwell in. And he, by this time he was rich. Years have passed by and he must have multiplied his wealth. So when the angel came and two of them came and says, you gotta leave. You have to understand what it means to leave. He had a lot of things going for him in the city that he dwells. His livelihood was there. His future, as far as his financial obligations were concerned, was in that city. No wonder folk today, when you invite them to come to the Lord, that they're hesitant. I'm beginning to think that they are weighing what they have to leave. Not everybody who comes to church are broke, busted, 
and disgusted. There's some folk who had a lot of good things going on. Oh, y'all don't want fine job, living in a nice neighborhood, had good friends. They are accustomed to certain lifestyle. And when you invite them to come to the Lord, you're, you're really putting them on the spot. Because it may mean they can't associate so much with those in whom they have been doing that for years. So we must be mindful of how folk and where folk are as we invite them to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, given all of that, you have to understand the state of mind of law. Because the Bible said that even though the angel told him that there was judgment coming and this city was going to be destroyed, that Lot was not in disagreement with the angel. But he had a personal struggle. And the Bible was astute enough to capture that minor detail, if you will. The Bible said he hesitated. Thank you, Jesus. He knew it's right to leave Sodom. It's right because he knew that those who told him were connected to God. Hallelujah. But he had a personal struggle. To leave behind everything that he held on to. Like Lot, I believe many of us in here have personal struggle to leave where we are and go to the mountain. Hallelujah. I don't want to belabor too much tonight, but we have heard a whole lot since the meeting began of what it means to climb up to the mountain. Thank you, Jesus, and how we, we can't take some things that are good, but they are a hindrance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Your, your iPod is good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, maybe you got a nice purse, too. Maybe you got a nice briefcase, too. Maybe you got a whole lot of nice stuff. But if you don't climb up to the mountain, it's going to become a liability to you. Sooner or later, you're going to have to let it go. So I would like to humbly submit that we have some similarities to Lot tonight. Young folk got some similarities to Lot. They, they, they are hesitating to go up to the mountain. They know that the mountain top has a whole lot of good stuff. Somebody said when they went into the mountains of Virginia and they looked down uh, on the valley below, they see the beautiful scenery. If you cross the border to the country that I live in and you go up into the, the hills of Banff and you look down and you look like you're looking on a picture with the, the lakes and you look on the mountain peaks across in the middle of summer, you will see the ice cap mountains. Beautiful for a situation. But I promise you that there are some things that cause us to hesitate to go up to the mountain top. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we are wondering, Charles, can I do my professional studies and still get to the mountain top? So we hesitate to make the sacrifice. We hesitate to do the fasting. We hesitate to do the prayer. We hesitate to lay out before God. Because it might mean that folk will look at me and think I'm kind of weird. They may think that you're kind of crazy when you don't dress like them no more. When you don't go to the places that they're going no more. And they hesitate. Tell somebody it's true. Thank you, Jesus. But I want you to understand this. That God understands your level of hesitancy. And I love some things about God. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible 
listen, that the angels. That the angels grab a hold of lots, held them by the hand, and put some force on him that causes him to come even though unwillingly. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. For God to bring some of us to where we need to be brought to. For God to minister to us and anoint us sometime, he's got to exert a little force. Thank you, Jesus. He grabbed hold of him and said, I love you too much to let you have your own way. Thank you, Jesus. I've got some good investment for you. So I can't let you sit where you sit. I can't let you hang out with those who you hang out with. So I'm going to grab hold of you. And you will come with me. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're too precious to leave you behind. I put some things inside of you. And I can't allow you to waste no more time. You've got to stir up the gift that is in. sister home after service. You don't understand what we're trying to do here. But we understand some divine order. Glory 
glory be to God. Because we understand that Satan is not to be trifled with. He's got over 2,000 years of experience. You're just about 18 years old. You're just about 22 years old. You ain't gonna know nothing yet. Can I speak? I, got, I know my doctor about you. That the young folk brain don't finish growing until you're about 23, 25 years old. How come you know everything? Glory to God. Something's wrong with my mind. Glory to God. But I got to let you know this that the Lord has some plans for uh, the lot and his children. Glory be to God. Now I'm not going to suggest that you worship on Lot's mountain. Because if you read the rest of the background, that was not such a good spiritual experience for Brother Lot. and mess up his mind. He did some things he would not do under normal circumstances. So you don't want to worship on Lot's mountain. But you got to learn how to worship on your own mountain. Hallelujah. Can I preach a little bit here? Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So I would like to take reference concerning Moses. Hallelujah. The Bible told us Moses had a visitation from the Lord. One day while he was out, just give me a couple minutes, preachers. I could feel the anointing flowing from you. Glory to God. And he was at the backside of Mount Hover. And he had an experience. He saw something. And he began to look at it. The Holy Spirit dropped into my spirit and said, What are you staring at? Uh, yeah, it went over your head. But, but, but you get it, you get it, you get it. Hallelujah. Sometimes we gotta check what we're looking at, you see. Glory to God. Because our eyes have a way of just. You're looking that way, but your head is faced that way, but your eyes are going like this. Maybe somebody should put your hand on the chicken. Let's kind of straighten it up. Because man, she no good. Oh, you know you're here. But, 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 but I, I told you this Moses was looking at the right thing. He was staring on a phenomenon that looks different than the ordinary. Thank you, Jesus. God is watching what we're looking at. Yes, yes, yes. That one came for me. In my spirit, I'm saying, oh, so what am I looking at? God is just looking over my shoulder and see what I'm looking at. Hallelujah. You get to check and see what you're looking at. God is watching, and he is mindful of what you're looking at. For the Bible says, Moses begin to stare at the burning bush, and he drew aside and said, let me go check this out, and see what this is all about, that God met him when he saw that he turned aside and God began to talk with him and he began to tell him what he had in store for him and I believe every now and then preachers we've got to start speaking some things into people's lives speak some things into some young folk's lives tell them they've got potential don't get jealous of them don't get nervous of them I'm not jealous of nobody in my church or in anywhere I go because God He's the one that gives gifts unto all men. Hallelujah. And anybody like church is gifted. It's my job just to coordinate the gifts. Glory be to God. So don't you get jealous of nobody. By this time, Moses was getting some practice with sheep. You know, I've been observing how people are as a corporate group. We're really like sheep. 
I'll give you a case in question. Even coming here from the hotel, uh, I was in a long line of, of traffic. Uh -huh. And I looked, one lady was jammed, about 20 cars. And the next lane was free. All we like sheep. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step out in the next lane and step on my gas. I go straight to the end of the line. And I just came right out down the track. Because all oh, we like sheep. Moses was practicing. But now, God was going to take his practice into the real world. Move it from the clinical setting into the real world. Hallelujah. You're in church, you're in a in clinical setting. Everybody around you is Jesus only. Everybody in your this is worshiping God. But when I take you out of here and stick you into a hotel room, and nobody else is there, that's the real world. Now you got to learn how to take the lessons learned in this church service and worship God on your job. Worship God in the classroom. Worship God in the stairwell. Worship God in the lunchroom. Worship Him on the job. Worship Him in the car, in the parking, or wherever He is. Somebody praise your God. I heard the Lord say to Moses, I'm going to fix it so that you will come back and worship on this mountain. Thank you, Jesus, because you got to know that I'm with you. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes our young folk don't believe that God is with them. Glory to God, but I'm making a covenant with you that you will come back and worship with me. You see, on the mountain, it's a place of covenant. When you get on your mountain top, or even before you get to the top, it's a place of covenant. God is a covenant God. What is a covenant preacher? It's a pledge. It's a promise. It's a treaty. It's an agreement. You've got to make an agreement with God. In other words, God is expecting you to be a, a person of your word. When you got baptized, you said, what did you say? I go all the way with you, Jesus. <laughs> When you got the Holy Ghost like I did, I felt like I'd fly off to heaven. Because I, I just wanted to get the Holy Ghost to go to hell. But the Lord said, I didn't give you the Holy Ghost to go to hell. I, I know that mess up your theology. That's all right. But you get the Holy Ghost to live in this freaking world. You don't need no power in heaven to live, live from sin. It's all right up there. But I need the Holy Ghost to hold me right here. But I'm tempted to do something I don't want to do. I need something to hold me back. Hey, come me to God. And I'm tempted to cheat on my wife. I need something to hold me back. Just the I need the Holy Ghost. It's a necessary thing for God to hold you back when everything in your body is screaming out to have its gratification. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost to hold you back. But you could have taken that money and nobody knows all about it. You need something to hold you back. I say it's not yours. It belongs to the next person. Somebody say, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost now. It's a place of covenant. Amen. The mountain is a place of covenant. Thank you, Jesus. But I thought about it. Because your thought is escape to the mountain. It would imply that the mountain is a place of safety. Am I in the right church? But I thought more about it. And I said, the mountain was there before Lot had to 
who has came. Yeah. And a divine principle just dropped into my spirit. That God had the answer before the problem was invented. So your problem is not really a problem. Because if you got the solution to a problem, it's no longer a problem. Because you're going through a difficult time, you think it's a problem. But I came out of show you know this, it's not a problem. God already has the solution. It's not fair to be a Christian it's not fair I know you're thinking because as a Christian you're guaranteed to win the battle is already won Jesus already won the battle the victory is already his. So you know you're going to fight. You got to know that you're going to win anyway. If I'm watching a movie or reading a book, I, I cheat a little bit. I read the last part of the movie. Or I, I read the summary of the movie. So I already have an idea how we're going to win. So I can relax when I see the star uh, in a bad situation. I know we're going to win. <laughs> And God gave them a word. And hear what the Lord says. Nobody gonna come up on this mountain unless they go through a process of consecration. Young folks, we've got to go through some consecration. You came to have party last night and expect to come in the pulpit on Sunday morning. It just don't work. It trust the work. I'm not just speaking about our young folk, but musicians cannot talk to you with. You can't be playing them rags and expect to take up the instrument of fire and get into the courtyard of heaven. You've got to know you too have got to be consecrated. Can, can I preach a little bit? Hallelujah. And just like how I was a preacher, I've got to pray. And I got to finish. You better know you got to pray and fast. You usually need to ask yourself, when last you fast? Been in services, music can come and play being happy. And by the time the word is going, they're outside. The devil's a liar. Hallelujah. If you came in when I'm preaching the word, then don't play for me. Now that might not sit too well with you folks over here, but I'll tell you that where I'm concerned, you gotta be anointed. Because when you play anointed, when you play in the spirit, something gonna stir up. My anointing gonna stir up. My gifting's gonna stir up. I'm gonna hear from God. If you think I'm not speaking the Bible, the Bible said Elisha couldn't prophesy, but he called for the future and said to get the form the cards of glory. Unless the Holy Ghost comes through the music, can I preach a little bit? 
from the Lord. And my son, who is our chief organist, I notice when his music changed. your theology for a loop. But even though you're married to you married you're not married yet. You plan to get married? Alright, listen up. If you want to get to certain places on the mountain even though you're married you got to tell Something else. As good as it is, and I don't have no problem with 
I'm gonna go time with my wife. But there comes a time I gotta say, honey, join me in fasting. I gotta get into the presence of God. I need to go higher. I need to go higher. Sometimes I wake up, see her, 
feeling ill on the side of the bed. Because when you're sleeping, your Holy Ghost is not sleeping. Something woke me up and said, My wife is not well. I said, I'm not going down. I, I, I don't feel well. I reach over with the anointed hands. Because something is inside of me. The God is inside of me. I heard the word of God said, Greater this he that is in you. The Lord is my healer. Hallelujah. How many of folk inside here have experienced God to be your healer? Then why don't you worship God on your mountain of healing? No, no, no. I, no, I, I didn't just say go to the mountains. I said worship him. Is that how you worship your God? Yes. 
mountain and you're about to worship, you're going to know him as Yeshua. The Lord is my Savior. with the Holy Ghost. Oh, but being my Savior is a daily thing. Oh, God. Oh, God. My Yeshua is a daily Yeshua. When I see where my feet take me sometimes. When you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're about to do the wrong thing because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you need a Yahshua. You need a Yahshua. You need a preacher, you know what I'm talking about. You need a Yahshua. You need a Savior who will step into your situation. Ushers have temptation. The deacons have temptation. If you don't have no temptation, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if you're really saved. But everybody who's saved must be tempted sometime. Hallelujah. But you don't have to sin in the middle of your temptation. He asked you what we saw. Talking to a preacher recently, and the preacher said, I remember when I was in the room on the bed about to do what I want to do and my desire to do, and all of a sudden Yahshua said, Step in the room, hear no more shire. And Yahshua said, What you doing, boy? I call you for greatness, I call you for greatness. How could you? Oh, thank you, Yahshua.
marvelous day. We've come this far. Leaning on the Lord. We have come this far. Leaning on the Lord. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able. John says, him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us For he who have begun a good work, he's able to finish the job so you can get to your mountain of praise, your mountain of worship. That's why the angels can't rejoice like how you can. They've never been through what you've been through. So when you begin to sing redemption story, they don't fold your wings because not everybody will understand where you've been. But God understands. He's a savior. Then my closing remarks, if there's one person in this house who would like to experience Jesus as a savior, could you come to the front right quick? If there's someone in this house who is not a born again believer, I'd like to invite you to meet our Lord. To meet Jesus. He's your Savior. Won't you come down to the front of the pray with you? If you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus, tonight is a good night to get baptized. Yes, sir, come. Come to Jesus. Walk with him if you will. Look beside you and see somebody. Ask them if they're saved. And if you're not saved, tell them that you walk with them to the front. Come on, preachers, reach that young man for me, please.